We're back. <laughs> Welcome. We are back. We are back. We're getting Doug back. It's been a while. <laughs> I don't miss these. <laughs> when we thought we were busy before, we were kidding. Because <laughs> we're really busy now. Got slapped in the face. He's like, oh, you think you're busy? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How about now? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, so we're back from Vegas. It was honestly exhausting. <laughs> um, just being perfectly honest. A little chaotic. We greatly appreciate everyone who put on the mid 400, but it was not organized. <laughs> Ross, <laughs> Ross, can I call you Ross? <laughs> No, okay. so Ross, baby. So Ross, <laughs> baby. Can I call you Ross? <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> I have a tendency, like if I'm asking for something, I usually go like, "Look, like, Gail, baby, we gotta talk," <laughs> and it gets me absolutely nowhere. <laughs> um. Okay, but that is part of the story. Is like, from our point of view, going into Vegas, never having been to this event before taking a trailer like full of our crap into downtown Vegas I mean we get to the hotel there's no like there's just no clear direction as to like we're not, I'm gonna get fired up about this there's, there's like, no clear direction for anything <laughs> we're just tired and okay but I thought there would be like there's just no map no time no sign no signs no nothing so luckily Kelly had a Glimpse of genius. I like Bulba, as you call it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you should call the hotel. And we, like, found a parking lot, a locked parking lot to park our stuff in. But then we got there on Wednesday, and we thought Wednesday was going to be, like, a full-on selling day. That's why we drove out there on Tuesday. Like, we got we got dressed. We put makeup on. We got caffeinated. We're like, we're going to sell some stuff today. Yeah. We show up, no one is <laughs> and we're like, cool, 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 cool. And then there's like, we didn't know how to get to our booth, and so we like, as these guys, we pull in, and then they tell us that our booth is like two blocks down that way. So then I had to back the trailer for like two blocks around, longer than that, around like all these like <laughs> trucks and trailers, and I had shit in the back of the car, so I couldn't see, and it was just you're backing up this huge trailer. I'm just like standing behind Paige. I'm like, you got it, beep, beep. Beep. I'm like literally no elf. <laughs> literally no elf. I'm just beeping. I'm like, yeah. I can't hear. My honking was superb this weekend. Um. <laughs> Not that. No. Because we need to get by like people. We don't want to like pound at them. So I would just be like, beep, beep, out the window. People would be like, oh, excuse me. I'm like, I'm yeah. sorry. You're like, beep, excuse me. You know. Um. Ow. <laughs> Okay, so aside from, like, all the unorganized chaos, um, I'm so tired, just, I'm so tired, so delirious, it just, we didn't have the sales that we expected or wanted, okay. I think that's, you know, safe to say, and it was a little bit disappointing, like, I, coming off of the off-road expo and some of the other, like, smaller events that we've been to where we've been we've had a lot of success um and we knew like even I think we even said it in our video after the off-road expo we were like this isn't every event isn't going to be like that um, yeah and definitely like people came people came to this event for the trucks and the cars and the race and not the shopping experience which mm -hmm. is totally fair but all of that aside I think this is <laughs> <laughs> All of that aside, this event, I think, was so huge for us because we made so many connections with other <laughs> vendors. <laughs> Bow bows! <laughs> right, let me get it. Yeah, just let her in. I made a lot of great connections. And I think, so we didn't really know <clears throat> what to expect. I think going into it, though, we weren't like, oh, I don't know. I think we thought it could go either way. But then after the first day, everyone was like, it's not for the shopping, it's for the race. And so our expectations were kind of like, we're like, okay, so we're here to network. And then we really <laughs> um, focused on doing that more so than necessarily putting it out there for sales. And we networked all right. We Let me tell you. Networked. <clears throat> Which is really fun, but it's exhausting. It's, it's really exhausting. tiring. Especially for an introvert. 
Paige is like, bada bing, bada boom, thriving. And Paige is like, come on, we're going downstairs. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> in my element, I'm like forcing Kelly to stand in the casino. And... Uh, but then you're like, I'll get you a beer. And I was like, all right, I'll come down for one. <laughs> okay, twist my arm. Twist my arm. <clears throat> Godspeed. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then our best friend Paige came to help us, which was just um, instrumental. Is that the right word? Essential. Uh, essential. <laughs> crucial. Uh, yeah. Not only for the free labor, but for the laughs. <laughs> for the entertainment. <laughs> for the entertainment. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was a really fun weekend. Um, oh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of good times. We got... <laughs> when we got to... So we're like... We're staying at the Golden Nugget in Vegas, which was like recently redone. And the our Golden Nugget? <laughs> oh, Bucky! <Bob> <laughs> okay. Two of your finest sandwiches. <laughs> so, mom gives us $100 before we leave. And she's like, spend it on gas, spend it on like food, whatever you girls need. First night we get there, Kelly and I blow it on queso margaritas. Yeah. I was and... just gonna say, we ordered a bucket of queso. <laughs> yeah, queso margaritas and tacos. And we, we treated ourselves. <laughs> no regrets at the golden nugget no regrets until about day three where we were like i want to come down but i can't afford it <laughs> i'll just eat a pb and j again <laughs> made from the butts of the bread <laughs> no like, one sh- wants a butt bread sandwich <laughs> <laughs> oh god but like uh, yeah and then so that's like tuesday night and then wednesday morning we wake up and the whole hotel lobby is filled with cowboys and we're like oh but not like 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 cowboys not california cowboys like we're talking like saucer size belt buckles belt buckles boots wrangler shirts i was like did we do we go did we sign up for the right show (laughs) yeah i'm like hmm we were like, is this attract this type of, which I guess, but kind of, but yeah, we thought we signed up for the wrong show for a second. <laughs> we were like, do we have to ride a bowl? We, we brought the wrong bowls on our trailer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, you know, I'm going to throw it out there. I, I had a pretty shit week. <laughs> um, you had some, uh, loading, <laughs> you had some loops and poops. Lo- <laughs> loading the trailer here. I dropped my bike, um, and then while tr- rolling it, like running it up the ramp, and then I dropped. Well, I didn't drop your bike. The strap on the other side came loose, like it wasn't the hook wasn't hooked on the ding on the I did the hook. Sure. The hook wasn't latched on the way out again. So when I tightened the other side, it came loose and fell on top of me wow. and, and bent my thumbnail back, so I was bleeding everywhere, <sighs> and then. Tuesday night, my retainer broke. Oh, so I had yeah. a piece of metal sticking up out of my mouth. That was... I died. Hey. <laughs> so that was great. And then uh, Wednesday night, uh, you know, made a joke to Kelly. said, wow, I really hope I don't drop my bike again in front of all these people. And then sure enough, I dropped my bike again, running it up the ramp. And it fell on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> you were like pinned for a second. You are like, I thought your face was like straight. You're like, I'm good. I'm good. Because I heard everyone. <laughs> like we're coming we got you and i was like no don't draw attention to this just like be about your day it wasn't like a drop though like you were just like you missed the step and you were like holding I have on to your bruises bike. on all four yeah but it wasn't like you were like a <laughs> it was on I you felt like it. well but it didn't look like it like it looked like you missed it, and it you were still like holding up your bike though like you were like <laughs> like squish, like a bug underneath your bike <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. How I felt. no 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 it really wasn't that bad it was more so funny because you were like i hope i don't drive my bike <laughs> 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 uh, uh, and then kelly got scared by a flame throwing uh what was it? <laughs> oh, there's this... If you've been to Vegas or Fremont Street, there's this giant metal praying mantis that just shoots fire out of its antennas. And, like, no, I didn't know that walking by. It's so really like laughing about it. All of a sudden, we're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, loud. And I was like, wow! <laughs> and I was like... When we're walking... We ate pizza by there. We're walking back. I'm like... For the love of all that is holy, like, I hope this thing doesn't go off again while we're walking by. And as soon as we get past it, we're like, wah! Like, Dude, that sounded really good. <laughs> Parking me, yeah. The, like, you gotta get in your lips. I just like it. <laughs> you might be a stinky eagle. 
Okay. And moving on. Okay. <laughs> moving on. Uh, yeah, you know, but so we're at the gold. We're staying at the Golden Nugget. We have this fancy room. There is so much room for activities. It's honestly ridiculous, Golden Nugget. Like, yeah. Well, you know, you know what was ridiculous? <laughs> the size of our bed room was like Huge. honestly probably mine and Kelly's room combined. Like, yeah, we didn't order like an order. We didn't like <laughs> we didn't reserve a suite or anything. Like, it was a standard room with room. two queen size beds. But the the open space was probably the size of Kelly's room, like alone, yeah. alone. And then the bathroom was smaller than the bathroom that we have here. So I have a bone to pick with the gold nugget. Um, that ridiculous. Um, that in addition to their lack of parking for trailers. Yeah, they told me to go into a parking structure. They're like, you can go look. We normally send oversized vehicles to the parking structure. Oversized vehicles with trailers, sir. Have you ever driven a trailer? You're gonna put yeah. it in a parking structure. Where am I gonna go? <laughs> I'm gonna take. You know, I'm gonna park. What? I'm gonna fill up this spot and this spot, and I'm gonna block the whole thing so no one can drive across. Uh, we're getting the Golden a, Nugget did not have it together with parking. We're getting a closed trailer next year. That's what. But I better news Paige is a freaking whiz at driving the trailer. Now you really, you really were top notch. A plus. Thank you. A plus plus. And then you know, so then except we, for the thing you brought with the trailer. <laughs> I said that you're good. Ding. I was like. Never mind. <laughs> so, it's literally like this tiny little clip. It's that, a little clip that holds the wheel. Yeah, not like, a big deal, but it's so funny. Paige is like, am I good? I'm like, yeah, you're good. Thank. I was like, never mind. <laughs> She's like, Kelly. I was like, I wouldn't know it was going to break. I, I put a dent in my car. It's fine. It wasn't your fault. It was, it was toy. It's yeah, designed to get dirty, everything. But you know, then we get to Prim and we get, oh, for the love of all that is holy. <laughs> Our hotel room is, like, literally in the dungeon. Like, okay. When we walk into the hotel, we're like, all right, it's kind of like... Uh, like the Avi. Like, it's a casino in it's Nevada. It's a dirty casino. Like, whatever. I'm not above it. I, like... Then we go down. They're like, you're a, a floor, floor down. down. We're, like, scary. And then you get out of the I, elevator. And you're, like, walking down this, like, hallway. And you're like, okay, fine. It looks like the rest of the hotel. And then you make, like, two 90-degree turns. And all of a sudden, we're, like... We're in the murder section. You're an American horror story. You're like literally lights flickering, holes in ceilings, holes in potential blood on the carpet. We're like, we're gonna die. And then we turn down our hallway and it's just laundry, dirty laundry for <laughs> days. And our friend Paige is like, dude, I bet you there's blood on some of these sheets. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, they're dead body on these. And we get to our room and I'm pretty sure there was mouse poop in the corner of the bathroom. I didn't look close enough to confirm and there was one mirror well two mirrors but they were both in this like small bathroom and all three of us had to get ready in there in the morning i was like this is this is going down and in the, the beginning stages of a small business yeah that was um not thank god we like each other <laughs> <laughs> sometimes <laughs> um but yeah you know perks of prim though we show up on friday morning to get our booth spot and because we were so nice to jimmy who was putting on the event sure. um we got moved to the cul-de-sac with all the big dogs and we were like with fox and polaris and which is funny because driving in you're like i hope you get put next to someone like polaris literally what you said and they're like you're right here next to polaris and i was like, like oh that next, is manifesting like next bed. to like the beer stand and beer just, stand us polaris were like living my best life. and like the um the starting line was like right behind us and mm -hmm. he's like will this do is this okay i'm like eh. We'll let it slide. We'll make a word. So, yeah, all that being said, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, that was What else happened in Prim? Like, we made a lot of friends. Shout out to the Heat Wave guys. I'm just going to say that. Shout out to Heat Wave. Thanks for being our friends all weekend. Yeah. Um, shout out to, what's the, what's their race team? Ascension. Shout out to Luke. <laughs> this, yeah, what was their race team? I don't, I'm so sorry. We forgot your race team. Forgot name. the race team, but they're from Iowa. Shout out to you guys. You guys are all so cool, but specifically Luke, baby. Thank you for the food. <laughs> Thank you for the drinks, for the shirts. Like, really took care of us. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know what we did to deserve you, but... We'll remember you. We'll remember you always. Don't worry. When we get to the top. Yeah. Your, your crop top selfie is going on our oh, website. Yeah. Stay tuned for crop top selfie in our mid-400 Men's video. crop tops? I think well, people want to see it. We're going to start a, um, someone suggested that we start a 
like we collect clips from every event where we get guys in crop tops and then we make like a montage of like all the guys in, that we get into crop tops at Dude, our event. Do we start like a new Instagram page off McRae and be like McRae crop top men or something and it's all the men that have worn crop top? Yeah, McRae men in crop top. Yeah. Dude, I can't handle another social media platform right now. You can't handle another social media platform, but it would be hilarious. It would be funny. I feel like a lot of guys would send in crop tops. Dylan, I don't want to take away from you dylan fields oh, de, leon. de leon you're still our favorite crop top man don't you worry sorry we just Luke. need a picture yeah oh we got a picture do we you posted it on the story okay. oh i got that baby saved okay i don't forget oh that's right that was the og crop yeah. top okay yeah all right all in all super great experience um i don't know if we'll be returning in 2022 just because it it's in march well, in march it's in march again so, well, is there, it not going to be in winter again? No. Oh, it's going like, back to what it was. It used to be in March. They moved it to October. Ew. So now it's going to be March again. Got it. Um, so not 100% sure, but probably won't be going in March just because we just got back. Um, we're trying to get to King of the Hammers and a couple other big events at the beginning of next year. So, and we already have one in March that we committed to. So, just have to allocate our resources um, accordingly. But we'll see. You never know. Never Maybe know. we'll just go as spectators and wear McRae gear. Yeah. Um, but we loved everyone. Get that- some t-shirt guns. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like the <laughs> Frank Mantis. <laughs> it's like t-shirts. T-shirts come out. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the people we met were so incredibly friendly um yeah really cool all the way shout out to all the women who came to our booth and yeah um you know from sorry charlie charlie Charlie, you're kind of annoying um we met you know the the bosley race team from i don't know their official race team name but i know they're the bosleys from maryland um and a couple women from georgia and the Dakotas and the Carolinas and Texas and all these incredible women who ride and just were so supportive of us and our brand and what we're trying to do. So we're, we're really stoked when we get to meet uh, people like that. And especially seeing young girls, like not in a creepy way, but seeing young girls react to our brand is really inspiring. I forgot to tell you when you and Paige went away, it was this really cool moment. And I just, I don't know why I didn't tell you earlier, but... Um, the mom had come up to us before and then you and Paige, uh, went walking around and she came back up with her daughter and pointed at her poster that says follow us on social media. And she was like, look, see, I told you girls can race, like girls can ride. Isn't that cool? And the daughter was like, I don't know. Cause I'm sure she was nervous with me standing there. She's like, well, I just want you to see that like girls ride and it's pretty cool. Like that could be you. She's saying things like that. And I was like, but then the, she totally ignored me. Like I thought she'd look up and we could talk and she just like walked away. I was like, damn. But it was, like, a cool moment that I felt like that was, like, a small, you know, drop of water that could create a ripple effect, you know? She's just, like, pointing and saying, like, you can do this, too. And that's just our poster. Like, hmm? Imagine seeing me on a dirt bike. Imagine, yeah. And I think we could go on a full rant about this, but I think also a compliment that we took away from the weekend, too, was a lot of women... We're saying that they don't feel like other women are very welcoming in the extreme sports world, like specifically riding is, you know, what we're, what we're in right now. And they're just like, wow, you guys are like so nice. Like not all other women are as nice to us. And which is so crazy to me. I mean, yeah, sometimes I feel like there isn't a huge place for women in this industry. So maybe they do get a little defensive, like they're a little threatened by it because it is nuanced and. So they are like, oh, I was here and like, this is, you know, and I could see how like that defense was built up, like without them even knowing, but it was nice that we're a lot more aware of it, maybe because we're not so much in the motocross world as we are. Like, we just really like to ride, like that's our hobby, but it was nice that, uh, us two and then Paige are like, we've went, ugh, tired. We've surrounded ourselves with like some really wonderful people that like loved riding so many cool women. So I feel like we don't experience it. Like we've just been so fortunate to have really awesome women around us that ride. And so we want to like bring people. That's the community we're trying to like bring into motocross and like extreme sports is like the woman that we've collected in our lives. Because it was it's so sad that they don't feel like they can ride. They're like, I want to ride with other girls, but then they're not nice to me. So or even I, just shit walking up to someone's booth like not feeling comfortable yeah walking up, like we are selling stuff you bet your ass sit down put your feet up i'm gonna <laughs> give you a massage i don't like touching people i'm gonna make you feel comfortable <laughs> because i'm trying to sell my product and yeah. my brand like that 
I so that to me just blows my mind that like one to not feel included in the community like that's really shitty like that is such a, it hurts my heart to hear people say that, that they don't feel like there's a place for them because of, because other women have made them feel like they don't belong. Like, yeah, I, I'm just so stoked when anyone wants to ride or like go out to the desert. Like if my girlfriends are like, yeah, I just want to go camping with you. Like I'll freaking take it. Like, that's so cool to me. And you know, if you're learning how to, if you want to learn how to ride, that's stoked. Like I'm, I'm so happy to teach you how to do that. Yeah, but to, But when women are like, I they're mean to me when I walk up to their booth what this is literally someone who's gonna buy something from you like and that aside okay so then take so that's like the business side take that out of the picture that it's another human being so uh what like what reason do you have to be mean to this person that you don't know who's like walking up to your booth to talk to you and yeah like it just blows my mind and I just like uh, clearly I'm very passionate about Asian it and I talk about this a lot where we never always found a place in this industry ourselves because a lot of women are highly sexualized and then the other women are like get down and dirty super hardcore riders where we kind of fall in between like we're tomboys that love to be women like Like, we love to get down and dirty but we also love to throw makeup and dresses on so like where does that leave us we're like rock your bad wear what you want if that's what you want to do do your thing vice versa like if you get hardcore but like where does that leave a spot for women like us? And so that's what this company is. It's like, if you're in between like us and you don't want to be like... Identified as one or the other. Exactly. Like you can just be a part of our team. And like, even if you do, and you like, if you are more like that, but you also want to be on our team. Okay. Like, or more like that. Like, we just want to be open to everyone. Like everyone can be on our team. Yeah. Which unless more women to ride with, dang it. (laughs) Unless you're mean. If you're mean... You Get out can't, of town. can't be on our team. But I just, yeah, so I think going back to that, that's a great way to say it. It's like there's the group of women who are highly sexualized in the community. Like they're they're part of the race teams and that's super like, like, you're, like you're super hot. Yeah, Good no absolutely you. no judgment. But and the, but then there's also the people who the women who are super hardcore riders. And I think both of them, to a degree, rightfully, you know, rightfully so, have feel like they have earned their spot in this community one way or the other um and so that could lead to a form of defensiveness to like defend their spot and be like well who are you to think that you can and we are so different so they're like to be on the same level as us anyway i think that's just that's where a lot of the defensiveness might come from you know as if i'm a woman and i walk up to another woman in the industry or another booth or whatever it may be and I get that reaction, that's kind of immediately where, where I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't know this person. I don't know why they're acting this way. I don't appreciate it because they don't know me, but also like maybe they've, maybe they have paid their dues or maybe they've experienced sexism themselves and feel like they've finally made it. Or, or women have been mean to them. So now they're like, okay, I'm, I'm this not, is how it is. Yeah. But. Yeah. Which is, we're changing that. Forget that. Forget that. Like, We're going to be just, if you want to just ride a dirt bike, male or female, and you love it, and you like getting out there, and you vibe with us, like, welcome to our team. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just don't under, it makes me sad. I don't like other people that are mean to other people. We don't like other people. We. We don't like that. (laughs) And it's just, uh, (laughs) we don't like people who are mean to other people. And like, don't get me wrong, I love the team, but like, (sighs) It's already so hard for us in this world. Like, it's already not, and I'm not saying just women, like people. Like, people in general. It's hard hard to be alive. It's hard to be a human. Humans are complex, and it's a lot, and life is already hard, and add people who are, like, mean on top of it, and you're like, excuse you. And, like, a lot of times those people are mean because life is hard, and that's the way, whatever. But I'm just like, no more. I'm, I will understand you, but at the same time, if you come to Team McRae, I'm like, we're going to teach them compassion, because... Forget that. I'm tired of people being mean to other people. And especially when someone's trying to do something that's so out of their comfort zone. Like a woman who's finally like, you know what, I think maybe I'll try writing. And then she's discouraged because someone's mean to her. Another woman, in fact. It's like, get out of town. Like, let's put our egos aside. And like, we need each other to like make this happen. And like, we had 
so many guys this weekend too that are like, I love women on dirt bikes. <laughs> They're like, we want to see Hell yeah, it. bro. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I thought one guy was like, I'm not being sexist, but I love seeing chicks, chicks on, on dirt bikes. bikes. We're like, us too. Us too. In a heterosexual way. <laughs> we love seeing chicks on dirt bikes. <laughs> but he was like really nice. He was cool though. He was talking about it. He's like, yeah, I want to see more women out there. Like most guys like are supportive of it. So like, ladies, let's get on the same team here. And let's freaking pass these boys. Um, yeah, it's, part of the, it's part of the vibe. I was really... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Bad Daya! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That's Daya. our rally cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, that's our passionate talk about being nice to other people. All that being said, we're not perfect, and we've definitely had moments where we've judged other women and other businesses or and been threatened by we're others. been threatened by other women and businesses. And so Charlie, no, come here. Um, so, you know, I don't want to sit here and pretend like that's something that we've never done. Uh, but I think after this weekend, I mean, we always strive to be nice. We always try strive to be kind and respectful to others. Um, I growing up, I was bullied. And so it, that really strikes a chord for me. Like I never want people to feel left out and, or that they, ah, ah, come here, Charlie, no. Charlie's the perfect example. Yes. She gets kitties no matter, no matter who you are. No matter how ugly I do. <laughs> <laughs> she still loves you. Oh, yeah, yes. um, But you know, I just, all that being said, I don't want us to come off like we're, we're so high and entitled and perfect and no. we've never done that. But I think after this we get, oh, thank you. I know, thank I you. Know. We're doing great. Um, after this weekend, I think it's something that we both want to be extra mindful mm-hmm. and conscientious of, mm-hmm. uh, just creating a community where everyone feels connected and supported and loved and welcomed. That is all.